James II, The Storms of This Deceitful World, by Mike Walker. A wise man once told me that in this world it is best if one knows everything or nothing. Of course, I have no idea if the so-called wise man knew everything or nothing. But one thing I do know, wise or stupid, is that there is only one world that matters, and that world is this one. Oh, my name is Sarah Churchill. My husband was his best general. My sister-in-law was, for a while, his best mistress. But she was far too beautiful, and in the end she had to go. Him? Oh, him. His... You see? They're for me. They love their king. Together, there's nothing we can't do. Do you see that? Listen to the man. It's Ireland, sir. They cheer who we tell them to cheer. It's, it's not even all of Ireland. Prime your muskets! Prime your muskets! You hear that? Prime your muskets! We've hardly half a regiment of bloody muskets. We do have right on our side. I don't need right. I need muskets, powder and balls. You have no faith. With faith, a man can move mountains, but without it... Either way, we're stuck in a bog on the Boyne, waiting for an army of Protestants with the best cannon, muskets, cavalry, foot soldiers. For all I know, best bloody camp whores and bum boys Dutch money can buy. I have a feeling about this day. God will be with us, Tolbert. I believe that. I'm a soldier. I believe in having cannon that can shoot farther and harder than his. There he is! There's your man, William of Bloody Orange, King of England, Scotland, Wales. That's not true. Well, he's the one with a crown on his head. My crown. So, sir, with her respect, why in hell's name did he give it to that Dutch gobshite? God, I hate that bloody chew. And maybe it's time to take it back. What, sir? Maybe it's time to take it back, the crown. Then, then we advance... No, before he has time to settle his troops. Are you sure oh. we're, we're, that our men are... Should, should they have a chance for confession? To, to, to pray to for stop, If we go, we must go now, before he's ready. He'll expect you to wait to give him time. They have to act with honour, Dick. Do, do, do you see that? He's a bloody Protestant. This is for the kingdom. You have to act now. James, do we go? Do we fight? For God! For King James! For the Kingdom! For God, for King James, and for the Kingdom! God save the King! God save the King! God save the King! Richard Talbot, Earl of Tarcon. How does a man become a leader? How does a leader recognize the moment? Does he make it or follow it? I knew him. I was his man. I am his man to this day. I was there on that day when everything was his for the taking. I thank you for all your kindness over these difficult days. The death of a king, the accession of a new king. I know many of you have concerns about a Catholic monarch on an Anglican throne, so let us not turn away from this question. I owe the people of this country the truth of the matter. I am a Catholic, and I believe I am known as an honest man. And I say here before these two houses that I will preserve the government in church and state as it is now by law established. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in return for this stability that will encourage trade both at home and in the American dominions of this nation, the Lords and Commons have agreed the finances for the royal household. Yes. The functions of state and the defence of the realm shall be set and inviolate from this time and for the foreseeable future. Yes. If I may say, sir, a great speech. You may say it, Sunderland, since I believe you wrote it for His Majesty. Huh? Oh, 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 my God, he did, Churchill. Look at his face. He blushes. 
All rare to see it. Sunderland blushes. I think it caught the spirit of the times. Very much so. Never was a voyage more favourably embarked upon. Or so richly provisioned with a crew so biddable. Hmm. Parliament knows His Majesty will steer the ship of state. The state knows it needs peace to get rich. And the Tories are up and the Whigs are down. Mm, down, but the bastards are not out. Oh, we're correct. They'll be back, that's for sure. But this time, we'll be waiting for them. Keep up moving! Get off the beach! Keep moving! Then form them up! A good day for it, Colonel. The sea's been kind enough, or the weather's fine. I'd like to be well inland by dark. Mm. We'll need to throw out a perimeter. We don't want anyone to spoil our entrance. If anyone does, it's the last thing he'll ever do. We need surprise if we're going to pull this off. Trust me, Colonel, we will. We all trust you, sir. That's why we're here. And keep the men in order. No looting, no theft. They've not been paid in a while. They've everything to hope for. And we must keep the locals sweet. We're going to need their support. Uh, will we get it? That's the thing. Will they come over to us? Oh, they love me, the people. The ordinary folk, they always did. That's why my uncle is going to be crapping himself when he hears that Monmouth is back. Sunderland, Chancellor. In a way, the whole Monmouth business was the greatest success James ever had, and the very worst thing that could happen to him at the beginning of his reign. How many? So far, 4,000. That's an estimate, but a good one. He's pulling in a lot of Commonwealth men, the good old cause and all that. It's how they are in the West Country. It's like another century. And the North? How are they there? Whigs to a man. If they don't remember the war, their fathers do. They'll risk a lot for political power, but not profit. They're making money. They'll save making war for another time. Trade conquers all. Except the boy Monmouth. Our people tell me he's printed posters saying you killed your brother to get the throne and impose the Roman Catholic faith on this fair land, and so on. And he never so really on. grew up, you know. Charles always was too easy with him. So now it's our problem. Is it a problem? 4,000 rebels is always a problem. Yes, we can deal with it. The real question is, is it a problem we can turn to our advantage? Sunderland says we must strike hard and fast. That, my dear Jimmy, is why you have my clever husband. Monmouth is gathering support as he goes. Oh, come on. It's not the end of the world. Monmouth is a pretty young man with pretty manners and pretty much no common sense at all. Uh, uh, John will soon settle the whole business and we can all get back to doing what we do best. Oh, uh, yes. Politics as usual. Oh, Jimmy. You know, it, it, it's a serious business, this ruling. I don't want to get it wrong. I really don't. But then you always try so hard to get it right. I'm not Charles. He'd take a punt at something or other, and if it didn't work, he'd say, oh, that's what I wanted anyway. And somehow he, he made people believe him. He made, he made them like him. That's not me. And you were the little boy who could never tell a lie. I want more than anything else in the world. To be a good man, to do good things, to be a good king. Isn't that an interesting question? Is a good man able to be a good king? Will you help me to be that? I am your loyal subject, you know it. Will you and John kneel beside me in worship before our Lord, that together we might be shown the path? The path to Rome? You're an intelligent woman. You must realise it's the only true religion, the only true way. James, Jimmy... My dear, dear man, and you are dear to me. You were a lovely father to your girls. You were always kind to me as a child. But the only way Rome goes is to the end of days. I don't believe that, Sarah. If I did, I would hand back the crown tonight and spend the rest of my life in a monastery. I believe God has a task for me to bring this nation back to him. What? Tell me. Then maybe you should hand the crown back tonight. It would save everyone time and a lot of heartache. He so wanted to be wise as Solomon, and he ended up as dismal Jimmy.
No sense of humour. Never could laugh at anything. Never could let it go. Everything had to be agonised over. In many ways, as a man, Monmouth might have been a better bet. As a general, of course, he was as much used as a pile of horse shite at a formal dinner. They need to move faster. We have to surround the town by first light. It's the element of surprise. Why won't they hurry? What's wrong with them? It's not easy, my lord. Not in this weather. Not in the dark. It would help if we had mice. We have the fire in the hearts of the local folk. They will guide us through, Colonel Bryant. Oh, damnation! Oh, God! Us! Bloody goddamn turnips! God help us give you some real soldiers. You bloody useless... What is it? We'll get through. We'll get through. For your country folk, it's probably a ditch. As far as we're concerned in this weather, it's a bloody bitching river. But there must be a bridge. It's not London. Scouts! Scouts! Sir! Find me a bridge. Go east, west. Just find some way across this pissing water, will you? What do we do? We wait. I tell you what, my lord. Why don't you give the country folk a rousing speech? They'll like that. Almost as much as they like you right now. Exile, I think. Perhaps, Majesty, you might think again? To be merciful in victory is a fine thing. To be merciful in victory is a fine thing. Once. To do it again is not so fine. Monmouth has had his chance. He's still family. He wanted to throw you down, sir. The people are with you. The whole country is with you. Nobody wants war. You must be firm. What would Charles have done? Probably invited him to dinner. And poisoned him and wept for the widow and orphans. That's not me, Sunderland. Very well. I will do what must be done. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want that stain on his soul. So, what are souls for, I ask myself. But then, I am a man so often forsworn that a nation full of washerwomen couldn't get my soul clean. That's politics. That's what he never really understood. They tell me they found you in a ditch on Sedgemoor, wet, half-starved and eating a pocket full of dried peas. They were greened. Your Majesty. I see. Mushy peas. What were you thinking of, man? I am the rightful King of England. I am the son of Charles oh, Stuart. Stop it. My mother was legally married. Enough, to... Jack. Do you have any understanding of your position here? I am a prisoner. I understand that. I am a royal duke. Certainly the son, whatever you may say, of the late true king. You were a rebel. You committed treason. I've lived in exile for the past decade. It will be no great burden to return to life in Holland. Indulge me in one thing, if you will. Did you really think William was going to help you? Ah, oh, well, this I'll gladly share. Don't ever trust Orange. The man is a snake. He may be married to your daughter, but he wants what he wants, and he will have it, no matter who he betrays. And with that, if I may, I will... Uh, 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 what? What? <sighs> you can't. I'm a duke. My, 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 my father was a king. We're family, James. You can't. No. You simply never grew up. You always thought that at the end of the day someone else would clear away the toys and you could go home to bed. Did you really think you could get away with saying I murdered my brother? For God's sake. In a way, you've done me a favour. After this, the opposition will be discredited. No one in this country has the slightest desire for civil war. They want peace, growth, prosperity... They want King James, and long may he rule. But, Uncle, Your Majesty, I... I can't die. I, I can't. I just can't. 
And yet we all must. Oh, God. Oh, God. My wife, my children. We'll be protected. As long as you sign a document to the effect that your mother was never married to the late king and that your claim is a lie. <sighs> Sir, if you sign here... Is this the end for me, then? I'm sorry, Jack. I wish it could have been otherwise. God accept your repentance. God accept your imperfect repentance. Any last words, my lord? I have only ten. God protect my family, and God protect the Protestant religion. Headsman, do not hack me. That's fifteen. Oh, God. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. Oh. Oh. Hold him! Bloody hold him, someone! Oh. Keep him still! Oh. But here's the thing of it. When you lead, the dust is behind you. When you follow, the dust is in your eyes, and seeing nothing clear, you may begin to think that, in fact, after all, you lead. He is the best man I know, the truest man. He never willingly did a mean or a bad thing. He, he wanted so much to lead his people into prosperity and the true faith. It was always there in his heart and in his mind. And, a nation united under God and the old religion. That is what we worked for, and God blessed us in our work. So we believed. But in the end, perhaps he just tested us. Was it so awful? Well, it was a farce, my love. I would not have wished it upon anyone, not that. Thank you, my dear. He tried to be a man at the end. Ah, and of course, trouble too. Set himself up as the defender of the Protestant religion. But he is gone now. He is gone. And he will be forgotten. Well, he won't be in the forefront of anyone's mind. Well, then we must give thanks. Yes, my love. We should pray together, for this is a new start. And let us pray that the Lord will bless us with a child for this new age. My brother once said there are many things the Lord can do but play the ace of spades when you need it. He cannot. How great is your faith, James? My faith is the most important thing in my life. Before you, before Anne and Mary, before the throne. Before all of these... I stand before my God to be judged in eternity. Then trust in him to give us his son. John Churchill, soldier. We'd been friends, the king and I, as much as any man ever was with him. There was always a barrier, I think, between him and the world, a sort of defensive earthworks thrown up to keep the rest of us at bay. And behind that barrier... He laid his plans. I think at the beginning, Sarah was more awake to that than I was. They say, John, that the king is thrusting away at the queen these days. She's his wife. Why not? And she's old, so... She's not that old. They say he hopes for a child. I hope for a dukedom. Don't worry, sweetheart. You will get one. We need a few decent wars. That's what we need. I swear you'd rather sleep amongst the horses than with your wife. Well, I have met some very sprightly mares in my time. Oh, well, you could always go and soldier for William of Orange. Mm, not sure I quite trust a man who'd flood half his country to hold up an enemy advance. A little too profligate with his pieces. Inclined to sweep the board clear. Mm, he wouldn't say no to being the king on our board. 
And so he will be. When the king dies. Hush. Here comes Jimmy. Your majesties! Carry on. Carry on. Your majesties! I hope the evening finds you both well. Thank you, sir. Most well. I must say, Mum, you look younger every time I see you. I wish I had your secret. No! <laughs> But then you would have my husband, and you would be queen, Lady Churchill. Uh, Majesty, you always had a fine turn, so may I offer you the dance? Uh, it is kind of you, Sir John. I. If it's not too vigorous, I'm sure it will do no harm. Then, sir, I thank you. Sir, you will not disappoint me. Oh, you're too kind. Especially as my turn was never anything but clumsy. But, um, walk with me. I have been thinking, Sarah. Oh, Your Majesty is always... Of the things we spoke of before Monmouth. Sir? Tolerance. Oh, I think it was conversion. Don't you want an assured afterlife? I think, Jimmy, that the afterlife may take care of itself. There's simply too much history. Too much blood and pain between the roads to Canterbury and Rome. But what if there were a third way? A way that would work? Now, in this country? Well, if there were, I would believe in miracles. But you see, my dear girl, I do. Ah, the Queen calls. Uh, as does your dear John. We must not keep them waiting. This country will have great need of men and women of good will and great heart in the days ahead. Sarah, I'm going to make a revolution. What do you mean, sir? Majesty. I must surrender you to your husband, I fear. It will be, I hope, the only surrender you will ever have to endure in the King's service, Sir John. You must excuse us. Uh, we must go amongst the people. They expect it of their King. Your Majesties. Your Majesties. What in Hades was that about? You mean the Queen? If I didn't know better, I would say she was marking my card. The King? Oh, something's coming. I don't know what he's got in that head of his, but look out, John. We need to keep a sharp eye on Dismal Jimmy. Well, the ex-High Admiral rose the Admiral's son. <laughs> We were both bred to the water, Mr. Penn. A better, cleaner, clearer world than the land, I say. You can more easily judge a man's worth at sea. And not be overheard. <laughs> you like my park? It's very fine. But uh, rather small, to my eye. I dare say uh, you are used to a, a longer view over there in the Americas. Well, somewhat, sir. 45,000 square miles at the last count. Give or take a mile or two. Yeah. A man might look to a wider horizon, I think. I hope so. Whether he be Quaker or Catholic, Protestant or Anglican. We Quakers believe, sir, that we owe our conscience to no mortal man. <laughs> Though we are very sensible that we owe our land to the King of England. In your Pennsylvania, you have ensured fair trial by jury, free elections, freedom from false imprisonment, and freedom of religion. Yes, yes, all of those. I have been praying and reflecting deeply on this and other things. I ask, I, I ask, and I wait and, and, and listen. And that's the very thing, sir. God does speak to us, but in a still, small voice. And we must make ourselves open to it. Mr. Penn, you have made a place in which any man, woman or child is free to believe as God moves them, where each may worship with, without fear. That indeed is something to have done. I think so, sir. <laughs> with God's help. You wish to do the same? I do. A whole nation? Can it be done? What do you think, Penn? You've been closer to it than any other man. I don't know if it can be done, sir, but by God, it must be tried. It would be a glorious revolution in the way mankind lives on this planet. 
A glorious revolution, gentlemen. A uh, glorious, glorious revolution. revolution. Glorious indeed, sir. Complete religious toleration. A declaration of indulgence. Repeal of the test act. Obviously so, Dick. If there are certain jobs that remain closed to people of ability because of their beliefs, then it's a waste of talent. It's frankly not fair. Neither is life, sir. The rich man at his table, the poor man at the gate and all that. But don't you see the difference here? Uh, frankly, no, I don't. We are all equal before God. Well, Oliver Cromwell could have said that. But he would never have said that all forms of worship are equal. Then, with respect, why does not His Majesty this instant convert to the Anglican faith and save himself an awful lot of trouble? Because, John, though I believe in my deepest heart in the authority of the Pope, I do not hold that in this life it would make me a, a worse baker or soldier than you. That is down to ability and application. Nor do I believe that, that a dissenter or a Catholic would be a better or worse man for his beliefs. That is down to God. <sighs> They're not going to like it. Who isn't? Everyone. The bishops, for a start. Oh. They're reasonable men, surely. The <laughs> bishops? <laughs> it can be done. I'm convinced of it. Sunderland, if the king said so, you'd be convinced he could walk on water. <laughs> I'm his chief minister. It's my job to implement his policies. To your own perpetual advantage. John, I don't expect you to agree with me. I do not demand that. But I still ask for your loyalty. You will always have that, Jimmy. Be assured. We are all of your party. You know it, Majesty, to a man, but... But, but there has I... never been a better time for reform. We go forward together. There's nothing more dangerous than a good man with a mission. It is a great lie that the truth shall save anyone. In my experience, and I have served this country many years and know men and their enthusiasms... The truth has done very little but cause endless suffering and trouble for the rest of us. All stand for His Majesty. Be seated. I have called this extraordinary council because these are extraordinary times. I have drawn up a declaration for the liberty of conscience to establish liberty of conscience on such just and equal foundation as will render it unalterable and secure to all people the free exercise of their religion forever. And that an order shall be made in council that this declaration shall be read from every pulpit in the land for four Sundays in succession. No. No. This is the king's will. And so shall it be done. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 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 Upon this Sunday, it is right and proper for us to remember the 39 Articles of the Church of England, which have been allowed and authorised heretofore, and which our clergy generally have subscribed unto, and do contain the true doctrine of the Church of England, agreeable to God's word, and do set apart all other idolatrous practices. Firstly, that there is but one living and true God, everlasting, without body, parts or passions, they what? Refused to read it. Most of them went through the 39 articles instead, start to finish. Can't the idiots see what I'm doing for them? Freedom of conscience, for God's sake. Most of them just see the Pope in Canterbury Cathedral. We, we, we have to make them read it out. Get the bishops to issue a direct fiat to each and every priest in the country. Ah, well, there is a problem there, sir. Which is what? The bishops. They're here. Here? What do you mean? In the palace. They request an audience. Oh, that, that's good. Uh, send them in. Uh, it's send them in, man, at once. Don't keep them waiting. Send in the bishops. He had to show them he could take the lead and make the decisions that were necessary. He was the king. Monmouth was dead, dissent was dead, and... Who ever cared about a few fusty old Anglican bishops? 
He was sitting at the gaming table with his cards hidden, and only he knew he had a full house in his hand. He thought. General Monk, that wily old soldier who invited Charles back to England, once said, "If you do not learn from the mistakes of history, you'll simply make them all over again." And what does history tell us? England's religion is like a man's privates. Leave them alone, and there's no problem. But once try and mess with them, and there's going to be trouble. Frankly, never piss off the bishops. Majesty, we thank you for seeing us so promptly. Not at all, my lords. Please, all of you, <clears throat> sit. Or uh... and for hearing our petition so readily, sir. Petition. What petition? Against the reading of this pernicious doctrine of freedom of conscience, sir. It cannot be done, Majesty. The Anglican Church is the established religion of the country, and what is more, you swore before both houses of Parliament, and surely I don't need to remind you of your very words, sir. No, it would be a very good idea not to do that, Bishop. Carry on. I, my, my fellow prelates, and well, simply, we will not allow it. And I say you will allow it, Bishop. In all conscience, sir, we will not. Is there any chance at all that we might mean the same thing by the word conscience? Uh, by that, no, I don't think there is, Bishop. However, uh, sire, I beg you, listen. We have peace, prosperity, content. You have the country. Don't throw it away. It will be better for everyone. The king says you will do this, and Almighty God says we will not deliver this England up to the caresses of the whore of Rome. Is this the decision of you all? It is. Then say it, all of it. Say it. It, it is, is our decision, decision jointly. Then thank you. You may go. <coughs> not that door. The other one. It's quicker for the tower. A good scare, certainly, Majesty. But now I think, release and perhaps, perhaps nothing, Sunderland. This is a lesson they need to learn. The king may be reasonable, but the king still rules in this country. I'm sure they'll listen. I want them tried. The charge? Seditious libel. Of course, if you wish it, but, but Majesty, I have to say you are taking a big chance. My brother was a gambler. I am not. The people may not see it your way. Oh come on, man! It's plain common sense. I'm freeing them from the dictatorship of bishops and priests. Besides, they will soon have something else to cheer. All of you will, sir. Tonight, Sunderland. Tonight. His Majesty the King. I have the greatest pleasure in announcing that Her Majesty is with child. God save the King. God save the Queen. God save, God save the, King. the King. God save the Queen. How did they receive the news? Oh, great joy, my dear, and, and, and so many good wishes. And were some of them kindly meant? Oh, many, and, and many. I'm so happy, my love. Oh, we prayed, and our prayer was answered. <laughs> oh, but James, my sweet, the prince will be raised a Catholic. They took my daughters away from me, but they will never ever take my son. The road of freedom runs both ways for commoner and king. The declaration will ensure that. But what if it is a girl? Oh, then I will love her nonetheless. But I know it will be a boy. God would not give so much to hold back at the last. Do you see, my sweet? Do you see? Our son will come to the throne of Britain, and a Catholic succession will be assured. William and Mary will be out. 
No succession for them at any price. That, as they say, is going to put the wolf among the kittens. If it goes to term, if it's a boy, the Queen has a record of misses. <laughs> if it's real at all. Oh, they wouldn't. Would they? I would. For the succession. For that, I'd do anything at all. Members of the jury, you have you have heard the various parties in this matter speak to their motives and their defence. It, it is now your solemn ju- sergeant, my lord. What is that noise? Can it not be removed? This is a court of law. I'm afraid not, sir. Unless you want to call the military. Is it a riot? I believe it is. Uh, London, sir. Here in support of the bishops. Hello. Since I have so far taken no part in the proceedings, allow me to introduce myself. Eva Hart of Venueda, and I was there to represent the interests of my master, the other great player in this game. King James believed that the great invisible presence for whose benefit he perpetually strove was that of God Almighty. He was wrong. I must caution the jury against any bias in their deliberations on this matter. The evidence makes it quite clear, I believe, as to the direction their verdict should take. The guilt of the accused is in no doubt. The great invisible presence hovering over Britain was William of Orange, my master. Everything that happened was, in the end, about him and his war with Louis of France. How much did William need the resources, the armies and navies of England, and how long was he prepared to wait before he took them? Have they done yet? The jury is still out. The mob is still out too, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But the evidence is clear, is it not? The fact that a thing is clear doesn't make it obvious. The Lord Chief Justice has directed the jury as to their proper duty in this matter. He also directed them to stay overnight in the cells below the court, with no heating and precious little to eat. Perhaps that will encourage their minds to the right course. And perhaps will only make them more stubborn. I have noticed this about the Englishmen. You only have to say, do this, and they immediately do that. Don't worry yourself, my love. You have more important duties. It will be all right, won't it, James? I promise it will be. How much was William prepared to risk to gain Britain? How long could he wait now that the Queen was with child? And what conditions did he need to make the moment of invasion appropriate? One thing you can be sure, when William made up his mind, nothing stood in his way. If they had been his bishops, they would have drowned in a lowland sea before the sun had risen on the first day of their freedom. Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict on the accused? Aye. And no thanks to your lordship's hospitality either. Silence there! I will have silence! What is your verdict in the matter of William Sancroft, Archbishop of Canterbury? Not guilty. One not guilty! Thomas Ken, Bishop of Bath and Wells? Not guilty. John Lake, Bishop of... Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. We need to show there's a steady hand on the tiller and that the ship of state will weather the storm. Give people time and they will see the sense of the declaration. I hope so. Parliament will never... Parliament has already granted me all the finance and powers I need. Ergo, I no longer need them. I am determined to push this measure through, bishops or no, gentlemen. To ensure a Catholic succession. It's not about that. There are those who say that William of Orange is gathering a fleet. He does not like the idea of losing out on the succession. My dear son-in-law will just have to put up with it. Then remind him of that. You should visit your troops. Let the Dutchmen see we have an army and we're not afraid to use it. I'll... I'll go to Hounslow. To the camp there, uh, and be seen with the army. That'll concentrate William's mind, no doubt of it. Oh, it's 
good to be away from the court, John. I'm sure it is, sir. A man can breathe out here. Honest gut stabbing, not backstabbing, eh? <laughs> are they fit, John? Are they ready for anything? Ready they are, sir. Shall we? Attention! Attention! It's good to be amongst you today. I have always believed a strong army and navy are essential for the defence of the realm. You know, the army is safe with me. Um, so it is fitting in these times of prosperity that I should look to the army to support this step forward in our national life. The declaration of conscience. Silence there! John, why are they whistling? I uh, believe it is a, a Protestant uh, tune. Perhaps it's best... They we... will hear me. A strong nation has no need to fear internal dissent. We are confident and solid as... After all, we have seen off civil war and its horrors. Then let us go forward together as one nation in which each man may believe as his conscience dictates and, and, and not as the bishops and priests command him. Command him too. Majesty, I think you should leave. I've never run away from a fight in my life, John. I don't intend to start now. They'll see. They'll all see. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please, give Her Majesty some space, some air. Push, Majesty, if I may suggest. Push harder. Now, Majesty, now. It comes, it comes. The child needs air. Uh, midwife, take it next door. It's too stuffy in here. It'll suffocate. My friends, rejoice, rejoice, we have an heir. I give you the Prince of Wales, James Francis Edward Stuart. Let all rejoice with the Queen and I. Let bells be rung throughout the land. If there was a moment when a balance of power shifted irretrievably, then the birth of a living heir was it. Every man and woman in England and one particular man in Holland knew now that James intended to establish a Roman Catholic succession. It was like a change in the air. You couldn't see it, you hardly felt it, but, but there it was. I've given them a prince. A Catholic prince. And it would have helped, sir, if you hadn't asked the Pope to be his godfather. Don't tell me what I've done, tell me what I need to do. I want my people back, son. I don't know, sir. You, you could call Parliament, pledge your loyalty to the nation, the 39 Articles oh, of the Anglican Church and the Test Act. Promise to educate the Prince as an Anglican. No, that's not going to happen. They took my daughters, they will not take my son. Why don't they trust me? <laughs> a Jesuit confessor? Catholics here, there and everywhere in the law, the army, the universities, a thousand years of the papacy and... And... And I'm not my brother. They liked your brother, sir. They felt he was a man they could have a drink with, share a lump of bread and cheese. Oh, it's a story. I was there when we invented it. Old oak, solid oak, old Rowley, mug of ale, Darby and Joan at the well with good King Charles. We made it up. We sold them a story. A story they wanted to hear. Not a tract on freedom of conscience, sir. Not easy to swallow. Theology, somewhat indigestible to English tastes. Then I ask you again, what do I do? Make an alliance with Louis of France. Oh, this... William has been fighting French power his whole life long. It's the one thing he respects and the one thing he's afraid of. The one thing England would never, ever forgive me for doing. After the prince was born, things started to slide. A man barely had time to sit in a coffee house to smoke a pipe and drink a cup of coffee. Good coffee is hard to find. A man has to follow his nose. I like coffee well enough, Mr. Van Weyde. This is from the Dutch East Indies. Is it a good taste, Mr. Churchill? Do you like it? I've tasted worse. I've tasted better. 
Why do you ask? Are you in the business of coffee? I am in many businesses, but yes, I import good beans. I wonder, perhaps, if it is a blend you might consider adopting as your, uh, shall we say, uh, everyday beverage? Your English is excellent, Mr. Van Wager. Yeah, so is my coffee. Uh, do you know, sir, that I already have orders from seven most highly placed customers in the city and government here? Men of power and influence who find my blend very much to their taste. Very fashionable thing, coffee. Yeah, no man of the mode such as yourself would wish to find himself behind the fashion. And yet I have a curious loyalty still to the old blend that has served me well. Ah, oh, but then you are not a grower. <laughs> well, you would know that sometimes a wind comes, a, a great wind that blows from across the sea and cars down the trees upon which the fruit grows, and will we, nil we, the old blend may no longer be hit. There is a certain bitterness about this, though. In coffee, that is often seen as a necessary part of the whole. <laughs> well, nice, sir. Remember me to your wife. Look at his grin. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I take him? No, no, he's happy. My love, that that might be. It might be. What is it? It is something I can't see. That it might be best if you and Jamie were to go away for a while. My love. Do you see? It's a wind, a tune. How can you hold the wind, catch a tune in your grasp? It, 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 it's something and it's nothing. A glance, a whisper, a look from the corner of an eye. It's gossip, it's tittle-tattle, and quite suddenly, it isn't. How does that happen? William writes to me, he tells me this, he tells me that. I ask for the Scottish regiments to be sent back to England. I sent them to him to help against Louis. I have done that, you, you see. I have stood against Catholic France as my Anglican brother did not. I have made this nation wealthy. I have lost it all. <gasps> How can you say that? You are the king. Yes, I am the king and I am nothing. Oh. It's as if the world is slowly turning on its side and everything is sliding off it. And I cannot stop it. I can't even see how to stop it. <laughs> Maria, take our son. Be safe. We dedicated ourselves to doing God's work. And to that end, God blessed us. So we believed. And in the end, perhaps he just tested us and we failed him. He's at sea. Who? William. He can't. He can and has. What? Well, it's invasion, then. Well, he says he's been invited. It's not a bloody picnic. Well, he has a list of names. Half the Privy Council, the bishops, law, business, most of the House of Lords, a lot of the commons. Has the fleet put to sea? Well, not under Admiral Strickland. Roman Catholic celebrates mass on board ship, almost caused a mutiny. Well, find me a Protestant admiral they will follow. And, and get me John Churchill. He's a friend. He'll deal with a bloody Dutchman. I never did like that fellow, you know. Can't trust a man with short legs. It's pity you married your daughter to him, then. Where will he land? Well, Yorkshire. That, that would make sense from Holland. Well, maybe Essex. At this time of year, you, you want to make your voyage as short as possible. Well, you were the sailor, Jimmy. So, uh, get every available man and ship to the northeast as soon as we can. Sunderland, order a general mobilisation at once. And, and get the bishops to... I don't know, do something useful for once, Majesty. He thought he was still making decisions, leading. He was wrong. He was well behind the court by then, and the dust was in his eyes, and there was nothing to be done in England. I went to Ireland. There, at least, was still hope, I believed. Torbay? Devon? So it seems. That's impossible. He shouldn't have... Did, did, did. Our informants say he stepped ashore and spoke to the assembled crowds. Good people, I am come only for your goods. Only your goods. For my goods, too. Where's Churchill? He knows that part of the world well. He's at home, I believe. He's where? 
in his house with his wife at home. You really want to fight, sir? Well, it seems you'd rather sit in your garden smoking a pipe, so someone has to do the job, and I've never been shy of it, you know that. It's not about your courage anymore. It's about the future of this country. My country? Yes, your country. As an Anglican land, not a sort of stew of everything and nothing. You've lived through one civil war. Do you want to bring another down on us? You can't just throw out the king because you don't like him. You can do anything at all once the thought has been born in your mind. At least no one's waving axes around this time. We're done with all that stuff. I am the king, anointed by God's hand. And we're done with all that stuff too. They're calling this the glorious revolution, Jimmy. Change without blood and with the consent of the people. I thought I was going to have one of those too. The glorious revolution of freedom of conscience. And it wasn't just a ploy to get more Catholics in more places. You know me, John. We're friends, is that what you think? It's what everybody thinks. But can't they see if everyone has a choice... No one everyone... wants a choice. They like it the way it is. It's simple, uncomplicated. You don't have to think about it. You just get on with your life and let eternity take care of itself. God matters, John. More than anything. Not anymore. And you will not fight for me? Not anymore. He was right, Van Wader, about the bitterness in the blend. Young people like sweet music and sweet wine, but as we get older, we realize that the real taste needs a little more than sugar and honey. It isn't always easy to swallow, of course. Our forces at Hounslow? Uncertain. The, the troops we sent north are staying there. The navy. The wind is wrong, they say. The wind. The Protestant wind. Where is William? How many does he have with him? We don't know. Our spies, our people, are no longer our people. We are effectively blind. So our choices come down to... Negotiate with William. Never. Fight. The Queen is in France. There's no risk to her or the Prince. And if I lose? Talbot's in Ireland. It's his stronghold. He has Catholic troops, and it's out of William's reach, for now. Talk, fight, or run. There has to be another way. But there wasn't. Maybe it was best said in the Bible his grandfather caused to be made. For the good that I would do, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. They called old James the wisest fool. For young James, I think, they could simply have left out the wisdom. He so wanted to be Solomon, but he ended up dismal Jimmy on the banks of the River Boyne, waiting for King William's army to trample his hopes into the Irish mud. What's happening? What are they doing, Torbert? Shooting the wounded, I'd say. Or wounded. They didn't have many. It's wrong. It's not fair. I'll come back, you see. France will give me more men, ships. I'll make a new armada. We'll bring cannon, mercenaries. Yes, and William will pay. I'll make him kneel and beg. Beg. We should be moving on, sir. Their scouts will be getting closer. They must not take me, yes. Yes, we must go. We must prepare. We must ask God. James, to... they don't want to capture you. It'd only be an embarrassment to William. He doesn't want you. He'd have to let you go. What do you mean? You don't matter anymore. Not to William. Not to France. Not to Britain. Not to history. Not to... Anyone. It's over. No. It, it can't be. I am the king. I am the king. I am the king! In 
In the end, at the end, how a man becomes a leader, what makes him so, is a mystery. King Charles II cared not a whit for being a good man, and had it. King James II cared passionately about being a good man, and had it not. And in the end, that is all that matters in this world. In The Storms of This Deceitful World by Mike Walker, James II was played by James Fleet, Sunderland by Clive Haywood, Talbot, Michael Burtonshaw, and Churchill by Michael Shelford. Sarah Churchill was Jamie Barbakoff, Maria, Jane Slavin, Van Vader, Nicholas Murchie, and the Bishop was David Kahn. Other parts were played by Damien Lynch, Mark Edelhunt, and Matthew Watson. The directors were Mark Beebe and Sasha Yevtushenko.